Okay, in section 5.4, we're going to be dealing with, instead of addition formulas, we're going to be dealing with double angle identities and also what we call half angle identities. Okay, so we got a few more identities that, uh, the first one is that if we have the sine of twice an angle, so anytime it's sine of 2 theta, okay, the result is going to be 2 times sine of theta, cosine theta. Okay, in this case, u, it doesn't really matter what variable we deal with. When we have the cosine of a double angle, Okay, we have three different formulas that we can work with, and it's kind of up to us which one we choose to use. And then finally, tangent is going to be equal to tangent 2 tangent u over 1 minus tangent squared u. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the uh, first one. The first one is just a proof of the cosine of one of the cosine ones. We have cosine of 2x. If we write it as cosine of x plus x, now we have an addition formula. We learned in the last chapter that we can rewrite that as cosine x, cosine x, minus sine x, sine x. And of course, that also means cosine squared x minus sine squared x. Okay. Now, the other two, just to uh, illustrate, the other two versions of this okay, come from the fact that I know that sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. Okay. Since that's a fact, then cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. So since that's true, if I were to take this identity and plug in that instead of cosine, I'd have 1 minus sine squared x minus sine squared x, and that would lead me to 1 minus 2 sine squared x. And if you looked on the previous slide, okay, this was one of the other versions of that same identity. We could do the same thing over here by solving for sine squared x and then plugging it in, and we would get the other identity, which is 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Okay? All right. So taking a look at... Uh, <coughs> On page 479, we're going to look at number 5. Oops, uh, excuse me, 475, I should say. Looking at number 5, we have uh, sine of 2x equals 2 sine x. Okay. And our job here is to find all the solutions to the equation in the interval 0 to 2 pi. Okay. So one of the things that we're going to use double angle formulas for is for to help us with equation solving. Okay, if I have sine of 2x here, Okay. Sine of 2x, we know is 2 sine x cosine x, so we replace that with what it's equal to, equals 2 sine x over here. Okay. And then to solve this equation, what we want to do is we kind of want to consider it almost like a quadratic equation, where we are going to get everything on the same side and set it equal to 0. Okay. With that said, <coughs> okay, we can factor out a 2 sine x here, and we'd have left cosine x minus 1. Okay. So we're ultimately treating it kind of like a zero product property problem. Okay. And so once we have that set up, if we write 2 sine x equals 0, then sine x would equal 0. And I know the answers to that between 0 and 2 pi are 0, pi, and 2 pi. Okay. Now, they did not include 2 pi in the interval if you look at the direction, so we would not actually use that. We would just use 0 and pi only. And similarly, we'd set up cosine x equals 1 over here. If we set cosine x minus 1 equal to 0, okay, we know that cosine x is equal to 1 at 0, okay, and also at 2 pi. Okay, so 0 and 2 pi is where the cosine is equal to 1. Pi is where it equals negative 1. So those would be the solutions. But once again, 2 pi is not within the range, and therefore the only solutions to the sentence would be 0 and 2 pi. All right, I want to go back up to the beginning of this problem again when we get to this point right here. One might ask is, uh, well, at this point, why couldn't we just divide both sines by 2 sine x, and then I would have cosine x equals 1? Okay, ultimately, if you do that, okay, you would, uh, you'd wind up with this sentence, and you would be able to get some of the solutions here, but you would never get that pi solution. Okay, and keep in mind that if I were to put pi here and pi here, okay, we would get the truth. Okay, and so pi is an, ex is, an, is an answer to this question. And so ultimately, the answer to that question in general is if we were to divide both sides and wipe out part of the sentences, okay, we're ultimately losing solutions by doing that. So that's not a strategy we want to use is dividing both sides by sine x. So in this case, we have to be very careful to, by doing that because okay, we could run into significant problems if we try to do that. Okay. Um, looking at uh, number 13, same page, we have sine of 2 theta sine of 2 theta plus cosine of 3 theta. And the directions here are to write the expression as 1 involving only sine theta and cosine theta. So we want to ultimately get rid of the double angle part. So in the sine of 2 theta, we really only have one choice. It's 2 sine theta, cosine theta. So we're good there. 
But then with the cosine of 3 theta, the first step here would be to write it as cosine of theta plus 2 theta. Okay. All right. Because 3 theta is theta plus 2 theta. So if we write 2 sine theta cosine theta. And then over here we use our addition formula since we made it an addition problem in the argument. It would be cosine, I'm going to put in parentheses, cosine theta cosine 2 theta. And then it would be <coughs> minus sine theta, sine 2 theta. Okay. All right. And with that said, <coughs> we can continue. Because at this point, this part is good. Cosine of 2 theta, we can rewrite that as one of the three. It's really our choice. So if we write it cosine theta, and then we write, say, cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. Okay. And then minus sine theta times, and then that's sine 2 theta, of course, is just 2 sine theta cosine theta. Can't write that any other way. Okay. And so now we do it. You notice that our expression okay, involves only sine and cosine. Okay, it doesn't have any sine of 2 thetas or any sine of 3 thetas. Okay, it's sine of just straight up theta or cosine theta. Okay. All right. Uh, another problem I want to look at here is number 23 using our double angle formula for cosine 2x plus cosine x equals 0. Okay. At this point, my advice would be for the cosine, since we have another cosine to deal with, is to have everything in terms of cosine only. So I would replace this with 2 cosine squared x minus 1 plus cosine x equals 0. Okay. And recognize that if I put it in the right form here, that it's really just a quadratic equation. And thinking of our cosine x as a chunk like u, for instance. So if I write 2u squared plus 2u, or just plus u, sorry, minus 1, equals 0. Okay, it's really just a quadratic equation with u equaling cosine x. Okay. So let's go ahead and solve it in this u version, and then we'll go back to this sentence and find the exact solutions. So if we were to factor this, hopefully it factors. If we're lucky, it will. So we'd have 2u and u, 1 and 1. Okay, we'd have a positive 2 and a negative 1 would build a, ne a positive u in the middle. So that would be the right factorization here. And I'm going to go ahead and put my cosine back in. I've got 2 cosine x minus 1. Cosine x plus 1 equals 0. And at that point, I'm going to go ahead and solve those two sentences simultaneously. So in this one, if I set it equal to 0, add 1 and divide by 2, that's going to lead me to cosine x equals a half. This one's going to be cosine x equals negative 1. And then from there, we know that cosine x equals a half when we have a short x, and the short x is going to be at pi over 3, okay. and also at 5 pi over 3 in the fourth quadrant. Okay. And we know cosine x is negative 1 at pi. Okay. So those three solutions, our claim is that those are the three solutions okay, to that sentence. Okay. And it says 0 to 2 pi, including 0, not including 2 pi, so all those are within that range. And, of course, this is checkable. We could take any of these three, plug them back into the original equation, and make sure that the two give us zero together. Okay, okay. let's take a look at uh, we also have what we call half-angle identities. Okay, these half-angle identities are going to work very similar to our double-angle identities. In time, we have the cosine of a half an angle. Okay, we're going to have formulas for sine and cosine and also tangent. Keep in mind, none of these have to be memorized. Okay? They just have to be applied. Okay? So if we, wanted the, if we wanted to say figure out the exact value of the sine of 22.5 degrees, okay? I would rewrite that as the sine of 45 over 2, recognizing that it's half of one of our exact angles. Okay? If I wrote it as 45 over 2, then over here I could write down plus or minus 1 minus cosine of u, and keep in mind u is the top, so 45 all over 2. And I want to look at the algebra with this of this for a minute. If we go cosine of 45, that's radical 2 over 2, all over 2. Cannot leave it like that because it has a uh, complex fraction. So keep in mind the strategy is going to be to multiply both top and bottom of that fraction by the common denominator, which is 2. And so we get 2 minus radical 2 on top. We get 4 on the bottom. Keep in mind that's still the square root. The 4 on the bottom here could come out. So we'd have 2 minus radical 2 all over 2, plus and minus, which I'll deal with in a minute. Before we do, I want to mention this part. Notice that we have a square root that has a square root in it. Okay, In this particular case, that's okay. 
Um, just to go ahead and leave it like that. That's a proper way to do that in this situation. And then the other answer is, what about plus and minus? How do I know which one to choose? Well, okay, the only way we can tell is by where the angle is. And in this case, we go back to the angle. It's 22.5. That's the first quadrant angle. So the sine had better be positive. So we would have 2 radical 2 minus radical 2 under the square root and 2. And that would be our final answer. So we can also use half angles and double angles and use their formulas to figure out exact values for angles that we might not otherwise know the exact value for. Okay. All right. And so part of our most of our work today is going to be dealing with that, okay, using these identities to solve problems, solve equations, and also to simplify and find answers for angles we might not otherwise know the sine, cosine, or tangent to.